Hi, my name is Mary Vukicevic and this lecture is about medication which is used for the treatment of glaucoma. According to the NHMRC guidelines, if you look on page 107, medication is generally the first management choice um, for most patients with glaucoma and medication is used to reduce intraocular pressure by enhancing aqueous outflow or by reducing aqueous production. So there are five main types of glaucoma medication and each of these have their recognized actions, side effects and of course contraindications and you would have studied these in much more detail in your pharmacology subject. But basically these five medication types are beta blockers, prostaglandin analogs, alpha-2 agonists, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, and cholinergic agents. And we're going to go through all of those in a little bit more detail in this lecture. Each medication family of these five has a different method of action, and each one can also have significant side effects. The time that it takes to achieve maximal reduction in intraocular pressure depends on both the individual patient and the type of medication used. So it's not just simply uh, attributing one effect to the medication itself. The initial reduction in intraocular pressure as a result of these topical medications usually occurs within minutes to hours after they go into the eye, after they're administered. And maximum reduction in IOP can actually take several weeks to, to months even. Now, when a patient is prescribed any type of topical medication for glaucoma, there are several factors to consider. For example, the IOP lowering potency of the drug, the interaction with any other medications the patient might be taking or any other diseases that they might have, side effects and how easily they are to administer or use, and of course how affordable they are. The NH and MRC states that healthcare providers or ophthalmologists should choose medications based on the greatest chance of achieving target intraocular pressure, the best safety profile for the drug, the most convenient delivery method and being the most affordable as well. Now to facilitate adherence to medication healthcare providers should start with the simplest medication and the most appropriate one for the patient. So particularly for open angle glaucoma, treatment should be initiated at the lowest effective concentration of me medication. So you give the patient the lowest dose, preferably you start them on a once daily regime um, at the beginning. The most important thing is to help your patient adhere to treatment. How do we promote adherence? Well, we need to continually stress to patients that they need to persist with the medication and the management strategy, because as we all know, uh, glaucoma can be sight threatening if left untreated. And that's where it comes in, the second point comes in, where you continually need to educate your uh, patient about the risks and prognosis of their disease. It's encouraged that um, when prescribing, ophthalmologists make treatment decisions in cooperation with the patient. Instructions regarding the use of the medication should be written down, the time of day, the use, number of drops, um, a clear method of identifying the medications, for example, the colour of the bottle. This is definitely something that the um, orthoptist can be involved in. Taking a team approach to patient management by involving all healthcare providers in glaucoma care decisions. And again, that's where orthoptists can come in. Um, communicate regularly in writing with relevant healthcare providers about glaucoma care decisions. So appropriate referrals and letters back to um, the patient's GP, for example. Making sure that any medications provided to the patient have clear labels and information about their use. And that's usually something that will come from pharmacy when they pick up their medications. And here's something for orthoptists. It's important that you give your patients information to help them understand their condition. And Glaucoma Australia actually has quite a lot of resources available for patients about the disease and about treatment. 
And so therefore you can actively put patients in touch with the relevant um, consumer groups and support groups for their particular condition. Let's now take a look at the medications. This, um, this table here is from the NHMRC guidelines, of course. Now, the pharmaceutical agents are something that you should have already studied in your pharmacology classes, as I said before. So let's have a look first with um, prostaglandin analogues. Prostaglandin analogues are the first line agents which increase uveoscleral outflow. They have about a 25 to 30% efficacy. And the good thing about them is that they need to be used just once a day. And it takes probably about three to five weeks for them to take their maximum. Prostaglandin analogues are usually well tolerated and they don't really have a lot of systemic side effects. Um, they can cause a little bit of inflammation. So they need to be used carefully in patients that have, for example, uveitis or cystoid macular edema or something like that. Um, some of the other side effects that they have is that the patient can develop iris pigmentation and increased eyelash growth. One thing to note about um, Travitan is it's now made with a slightly different preservative, which is called Purite, which might work better in some patients who are allergic to preservatives in eye drops. Beta blockers are the next line in uh, treatment, and they're also a first choice in treatment, but they were previously first line agents, so it meant that they were probably um, more likely to be used than prostaglandin analogues. And they've actually been in use for more than 30 years, so they've been around for a long time. What beta blockers do is they reduce aqueous production and their efficacy is about 20 to 25%. And patients you'll find usually use these either once or twice a day. Twice a day. And um, there is some risk of systemic side effects. They're less effective if a patient is also on a systemic beta blocker and one of the problems is, is that they can lose their therapeutic effect over time. Um, another important thing that you should remember is that beta blockers can cause depression. So you should ask your patient about whether they're having any side effects because your patient may not be aware that it's the medication or the eye drops that is causing this problem. You can't really use beta blockers in patients with asthma, um, other respiratory diseases, congestive heart disease, or, or heart uh, other heart problems. The second choice of um, topical medications are alpha-2 agonists, and these have a dual mechanism. So they increase outflow of aqueous and also decrease aqueous production. Their efficacy is about 20 to 25%, and um, they need to be used two to three times a day. So quite frequently. It's possible that they have a, a neuroprotective effect as well um, and it's important to note that they take about four weeks to take effect. Alpha-GAN is the drop that's shown on the right there and this is um, usually good for the elderly and on the left I'm showing you their iopidine. This is um, only good for short-term use because it actually loses its efficacy. So often it's used before um, specific types of laser interventions just to help reduce the, the um, IOP quickly. They don't really have a lot of uh, systemic effects, but you can get things like dry mouth, lethargy. Um, they can also aggravate depression as well as beta blockers. They can interact with older style antidepressants and you can't use these in children. The next line of drugs are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and you'll see that they're also um, second choice or maybe even third choice depending on which drug it is and these actually reduce aqueous production. Um, they're, they're a bit less powerful too, their efficacy is um, perhaps only 15 to 20 percent and they can often take four weeks to take effect. It's important to be mindful of these um, effect times because that's when you'll see your patients coming back for 
um, for checking of their uh, intraocular per- pressure. So they'll be asked to come back, say, after four or six weeks, depending on how long it's suspected that the drug will work. Here are some carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, and on the left we've got Trusopt and Azopt is on the right-hand side. Um, you'll find that these medications are quite thick and soapy, and they usually give the patients a low-grade red eye. They do sting quite a bit too and leave a funny taste in the mouth. Um, if a patient is allergic to sulfonamide, they can't be used, and if there's corne- corneal endothelial disease, they also can't be used. And they can also uh, cause metabolic disturbances. And then finally, we come to cholinergics, which are right at the bottom there. And um, these are quite effective in angle closure glaucoma. And what they do is they contract the ciliary muscle, and so they're meiotic, and they decrease aqueous production. They also increase trabecular outflow. The dosage of these is four times a day, which is quite a lot, and takes a week to um, take effect or thereabouts. So what I've got uh, here is um, a bottle of isoptocarpine for you to see, but also um, a picture of meiosis there on the right-hand side, which is a side effect of of, uh, this medication. Patients can also get an achy brow, blurred vision, a myopic shift. They can end up with poor pupil dilation later and also get um, some scarring of the conjunctiva. The proprietary fixed combination drugs you'll see on the top row there, and um, these fixed combination drugs all contain timolol plus one other drug, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. So here we have um, an example of what's where. So if you've got, for example, timolol plus zalatan, you end up with zalacom, and then timolol plus lumigan is called ganfort. Timolol and Travitan is Duotrav, then Alphagan and Timolol is Combigan, Trusopt and Timolol is Cosopt, and Azopt and Timolol is called Azaga. These fixed combination medications will most likely be used if the um, first choices are not really um, doing anything to change the patient's or to lower the patient's intraocular pressure. And here are some images of the different um, combination drugs, the fixed combination drugs. You've got Combigan there on the bottom, Cosopt in the middle, Azaga, uh, Duotrav on the right, Zalacom and so on. And you will see these in clinic and you will will come across these uh, medications quite frequently. So it's very important that you are mindful of these. When you're talking to your patient about their eye drops and and helping them to um, use them effectively, and, and uh, according to the prescription, it's a good idea to mention to them that um, in order to help reduce the systemic absorption of the drug into their system, they can just close their eyelids and press along their um, puncta there in the corner of their eyes just to stop the drugs um, flowing down and uh, having a, a greater systemic effect. Also, something to note is that if there are two or more drops that the patient needs to use, um, then they should leave about a five minute interval between so that they can be properly, uh, the first one can be properly absorbed and then the second one goes in after that. So, to summarize the topical medications, topical medications decrease uh, intraocular pressure and they do this in one of two ways. They'll either enhance aqueous outflow or they will reduce aqueous production. And uh, as I said, there are five families of drugs. So you've got prostaglandin analogs and beta blockers, and these are usually the first choice of drug. They increase aqueous outflow and often just need to be used once a day. So it's a bit easier to start patients on these. Um, Alpha-2 agonists will um, increase aqueous outflow. They're a second choice in um, in drug uh, as opposed to the prostaglandins and beta blockers. Uh, other second choices are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and cholinergics. Both of these will decrease aqueous production as opposed to the alpha-2 agonists which increase outflow. 
Uh, cholinergics make a note that they're particularly good for the product for um, angle closure glaucoma, and the reason that they are is because they um, create meiosis. And then um, you also have the fixed combination drops, which usually are timolol and one other drug. And these are often used if um, patients are not responding to um, the you know first or second choice medications. And the last thing I'm going to tell you about is systemic medications. So usually um, either a tablet or an um, intravenous medication that can be used for glaucoma. Usually these are used just in very acute uh, situations and they have greater systemic effects obviously because you're either taking a, a, a tablet or you're having the drug injected into your arm. Um, Diamox reduces aqueous production and that's usually given in um, tablet form. So if someone comes into the clinic say with a, an acute angle closure attack then they might be given Diamox in addition perhaps to some, um, some first line drops to immediately reduce their intraocular pressure spike for them, make them feel better. Um, it's contraindicated in renal failure, so you have to be careful, I think, in diabetics or anyone that, that potentially has got renal failure when giving that. Um, obviously, orthoptists don't prescribe it. However, um, you might be instructed by the ophthalmologist to actually administer the, the tablet to the patient and the drops as well. Um, glycerol and mannitol are hyperosmotic agents. You would have studied these in the pharmacology subject and they're given intravenously. Um, you can't give them to diabetics and they're contraindicated in people who've got renal failure, cardiac disease and hepatic disease. So they're really, um, it, it, when it, it's quite a severe attack of glaucoma in the eye, pressure is very, very high, these uh, are given. So that's it in terms of um, medication for the treatment of glaucoma, and uh, and I've given you the summary there of all the all the topical medications as well. So worth revising your pharmacology notes for that too.